Do you have questions about God that you just have not been able to find the answer to? Hey guys, it's me, Douglas, and today I want to talk to you guys about asking questions about God. Having questions about God that you haven't been able to find the answer to. And it's really tricky because it, it sometimes it feels wrong to have questions. And so what if you have doubts? What if you have questions? What if you see things or learn about things that make you wonder? Is that wrong? Well, I think, I think that it's okay to have questions. I do. I think it's actually a very good thing to have questions. You know, in Proverbs, it talks a whole bunch about seeking after wisdom, trying to find wisdom, looking for truth. And I think it's hard to look for truth without having questions, right? I do think it's okay to have questions, and I also think it's okay to not have all the answers. And I think that if you have the mindset that asking questions is wrong, then I think you're more likely to fall away from the faith entirely. I've known several kids that, that I've, you know, I've seen get baptized. I've seen them believe. I've seen them become Christians. And yet later on in life, they leave the faith. They decide that they don't want to be called Christians anymore. And that's like the saddest thing ever. And for most of them, it's because they, they had questions that they hadn't found the answer to yet. And because they didn't find the answers, they, they gave up. And that's so sad. You know, I really believe that, that our God, the one true God, is the God of truth. And so if you are seeking truth with all your heart, I think you're going to find God. But I think that if you are not comfortable with not having all the answers right away, that that can be dangerous. I don't think asking questions is dangerous. I think that, that demanding answers in our own time can be dangerous. You know, it's interesting because in, in the Bible, after Jesus rose again from the dead, he showed himself to his disciples. Like they were in a locked room and he showed up out of nowhere and he said, peace be with you. And they got to see the holes in his hands and the hole in his side. And then he disappeared. And all the disciples weren't there in that room with them. One of them, Thomas, was gone. And when they saw Thomas, they were like, Thomas, guess what happened? We saw Jesus. And, and they were, you know, they were telling him what happened. And, and Thomas said, unless I can put my finger in the holes in his hands and the hole in his side, I will never believe. And I think that this passage is super interesting because Jesus didn't show up right away. But eight days later, when they were in a locked room again, and they were all there this time, Jesus showed up again. And he let Thomas put his finger in the holes in his hands and in the hole in his side from the spear that pierced him. And Thomas believed. And I think it's interesting because Jesus didn't show up and he didn't say, how dare you not believe, Thomas? How dare you have questions? But what he did say was, did you believe because you've seen? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. So yeah, Thomas did kind of make an ultimatum. He did say, unless I can do these things, I will never believe. And I think that that is wrong. I don't think that's the way we're supposed to do things. But, but Jesus was kind to Thomas, and, and he did show him the way that Thomas said he needed to be shown. But Jesus said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. And that's us, right? I have not put my fingers into the, the holes in Jesus' hands. And I have a lot of questions, okay? I've got a lot of questions that I, I haven't been able to find the answer to. But nevertheless, I still believe. I still have faith. And I don't have faith because I have all the answers. That's kind of actually the opposite of what faith is. Faith is believing in something even if you can't see it. And I don't just have blind faith, right? Like, I believe in Jesus Christ even though I haven't seen him because I've seen so much of what he's done. I've seen throughout history, you know, the, the struggles that Christianity has had to go through, and yet God has held the church in the palm of his hands. I've seen how the universe fits together. Not that I totally understand it, but I've seen how the best lives are the ones that are lived God's way. So yeah, I've got questions, but I'm not going to let those questions come between me and God. I'm going to let those questions bring me closer to him. And that's my hope for you guys. I really hope that you will not be ashamed if you have questions but instead that you would take those questions to God and be okay with the fact that you might not get an answer right away. You might not even get an answer until you're in heaven. But if you seek truth with all your heart, I know that you'll find it. And I know that you'll find God. Because our God, the one true God, is the God of truth. And if you have questions and you can find answers to those questions, awesome. That's great. You can help other people who have questions too. But I hope that you will never let unanswered questions come between you and God. It's totally okay to have questions. 
Let those questions draw you closer to him instead of pushing him away.